Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin over there. Is John Lodowski. How you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. It's been a long day for us. It has. Been going since about... Me and you've been talking since about 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a long day for me and you, like, chatting. Um, but, uh... No, we, we had our early morning meetings, which we normally do if we have a day game of any kind, like a three o'clock or anything like that. Otherwise, we'll have meetings at like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so uh, the, the, we're just trying to get back into the swing of things. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and try and get back into hockey as we were enjoying our summer a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> um. But the enjoyment is there, that's for sure. Um, I, it was good seeing the guys. I, I really got excited seeing them come out of the tunnel. And yeah, I, I did enjoy that. I enjoyed some aspects of the game, some aspects of the game, not so much. And that's why we're here. We're here to break them down. So game one was at three o'clock. Um, in the first period, uh, shots were dead at even at night apiece. Second period, their shots were ten to six. <laughs> Third period, they were eight to eight, and uh, shots were five to two, leading to a whopping total of thirty-two to twenty-five for Florida, taking the edge on that one. Statistically, however, the Preds were better in the faceoff circle. Uh, both teams were over on the power play. Predators were over four. Florida Panthers were over three. Uh, Panthers had ten penalty minutes, where the Preds had eight. Uh, the Preds had 33 hits to the Panthers, 21, 21 blocks for the Panthers over the Preds, 19. Giveaways were 10 to 6, but early in the year, don't really care about the, that statistic. You want to see that get cleaned up around All-Star, or about New Year's. You want it really cleaned up from where it was. Yeah. In net to start the games were uh, Sergei Bobrovsky and... Connor Ingram, Connor Ingram, 10 saves, uh, 12 shots with a .833 save percentage. Not the best outing for Connor Ingram. Um, Sergey Bobrovsky had the same statistics, uh, 10 saves, uh, 12 shots for an 833. Uh, Gudis was in net for the Panthers. Uh, he stopped 12 of 13 with a .923 save percentage, while Devin Cooley was in net and stopped 18 of 20. For a point nine zero zero save percentage, Cooley looked very well good, but had lack of confidence somehow yeah. behind him. Um, so that that leads to the uh, who scored the goals. E two uh, Listorainen. Oh boy, that's one of them names. I hope I got it right. Uh, w with a goal with an assist from Sasha, aka Alexander Barkov. Um. His legal name is Sasha. Sasha is Russian for Alexander. So if you ever hear somebody say Sasha Ovechkin, they're talking about Alexander Ovechkin. Um, and then you have uh, Kuninen on the other assist that was shorthanded. Uh, Kai Schwitt scored a goal with an assist from Aaron Ekblad and Giles, or Gillies, depending on how you pronounce that one. Yusuf Parsonen continues just to impress. Yeah. It, he just makes the right plays. Uh, well, yeah, it does. He does. It, it, it's it's really interesting on that one. Um, With an assist from Tomasino and Spencer Stastny, uh, Stastny getting his first look at, in a Preds jersey um, during the preseason, um, minus, you know, I think he was in college last year during this time, so he wasn't even the year. Um, Roland McHugh. Uh, is how they're pronouncing his name. Uh, he had a goal with an assist from Yusuf Harsinen. That put the game at two apiece for the Reds. Um, Ryan Lomberg with his goal with an assist from Cuban and uh, Solon. Uh, Cuban did second and Solon's first. Uh, Ryan Johansson with a goal with an assist from Nino Niederreiter. And Kevin Gravel. Uh, Ryan Johansson and Nino Niederreiter were teammates on the um, Portland Winterhawks team back in their junior days. In overtime, okay. at 459, 
point zero one was the release from Toronto's headquarters. Point zero zero one. There was a millisecond left on the clock as it crossed. They counted it. Uh, Alexander Barkov with a goal with an assist from Carter Verdhagen and Eric Arid Ekblad. Ekblad was as one of the old school players. Um, I I did like what I saw from a specific group of players in this game. Um, I liked what I saw from um Zach Sanford is physical and grit, but I don't know if it's enough. Uh, Igor looks a lot faster. Jimmy Hutchinson looks a lot faster. So I'm talking a little bit about guys I've seen before because it's easier for me to go that route. Right. Um, Carrier made a bad mis- mistake during overtime. Um, it, it, it's a fluky goal. It happens. Boro looked amazing. Um, I heard his name more than anybody else. And, uh, so yeah, there's that. That's game one for you. Fred's fall. <coughs> Four to three in that one. In the second game, uh, the Preds outshoot the Panthers thirty-eight to twenty-five, um, with a faceoff percentage of sixty-eight to thirty-two. The Preds were one for three on the power play, while Panthers went zero for two. Uh, penalty minutes were six to four, obviously uh, indicative of the power plays. Um, the Preds out hit them 23 to 12. Uh, block shots were 11 to eight for the Panthers, and the Preds had more giveaways at nine to seven. But as I said, uh, it's preseason, you don't expect a whole lot. Yeah. Um, nice. So, um, in that scoring in the first. Phil Forsberg with an assist from Matt Duchesne. They didn't miss a beat on that one. No. <coughs> Cody Glass gets his goal in the third. There was no scoring in the second. Best player period played by both teams was in the second. Very physical, very hockey-like second period. Third period. Pretty much from the 12 minute on, it was all friends. Yeah. Um, scoring goal on the power play was Cody Glass with an assist from Matt Duchesne, his second, and Matias Ekholm, his first. Um, I know last year when we were covering the Admirals, and, and I would consistently say, Cody Glass has a great wrist shot. Why doesn't he shoot more? Mm-hmm. Here's the result of him shooting when he could, you know, when given, when he does. What ha- What can happen? Duchesne had the assist and Echo had an assist. Uh, then Colton Sisson scored on a breakaway. <laughs> and I mean breakaway. There wasn't anybody in in uh, Cheatham or Knoxville that could have caught him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way you want to go on that one, there was nobody in that zip code that was going to catch him. Um, was an assist from uh, Narami. His first uh, in the Preds and in our system, welcome. And Jordan Gross, his first with a welcome to the system as well. Uh, yep. Tanner Janot also leaving off where he left off. Um, I don't think it's fair that they left the herd line together while in the back. <laughs> it's just not fair. <laughs> mm-hmm. That line's too good. Right. It's just a very hockey line. Their their objective. You don't got the puck, get the puck. Once you have the puck, shoot the puck. Right. I mean, you know, set it up, shoot it, put it in the back of the net. It doesn't matter which member of it doesn't. They're all happy to see each other succeed. Right. Also, welcome, former Badger, Ryan McDonough. Ryan McDonough looked very, very good. Yeah, he did. Um, and and Ackholm worked very well together. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to that defensive pairing. Yeah, me too. All right. So behind all that, let's talk about the tendies, because you know, um, Spencer Knight played very well. 
for Florida. He was the driving force in this game. It's nice to know, however, that we can still get to Alex Lyon. <laughs> mm. Because Alex Lyon was the Wolves' starting goaltender last year, and we just lit him up for three goals in 30 minutes. Now, also remember the three goals scored. Cody Glass said, hey, I know how to score on this guy. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so it's kind yeah. of one of those situations. But all in all, a very good game for, for Spencer Knight, not so much for Alex Lyon. I'm also not going to like Alex Lyon anytime soon. Just not a fan of his personality nor his play style. All right, so the Preds win four to nothing. That's the final. Yeah. I don't know who impressed me more. Was it Lankanen because he had more saves? Or was it Askarov because he had more difficult chances against him? Because he had two saves from a power play attempt where Lankanen had one against shorthanded. So it's like the trade-off. Right. The 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 amount of saves and everything, but a combined shutout. All right. You know, and, and Askarov looked very good, very much of what we expected him to look like. Yeah, he really did. You know, nothing that we weren't surprised to see. As many of the Preds and many of you have known. I've been watching him since he got drafted. Literally, it's been all eyes on him since we got drafted. Since he got drafted, we drafted him. And I mean, think of it this way: by this, by the time the season starts, we're gonna already have to do one in the system just for teams overseas, because they started now a month ago. Yeah, that's pretty intense. You know that they started a month ago. The KHL started a month ago. Two weeks ago, the SHL started. And uh, right after we played Bern in Bern, Switzerland, their season starts. Which also, if you're going to watch that game, keep an eye on Bern because Bern has one player that we drafted, Simon Knack. So actually keep an eye out on the opposite side for Simon Knack. Yeah. So, um, other than that, oh, yeah, don't forget uh, to check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker, Toyo 2, West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They'll outfit you with all your hockey needs, like this hat, you can get all your, some uh, Preds apparel. I believe they also have uh, Blackhawks and Wild apparel for you guys in this area who may not care for the Preds, but love the Admirals. Um, or if you're looking for a Preds hat or, you know, some stuff, uh, they have all the hockey equipment. If you need your skates sharpened, it's that time of year. Get them ready because we may need them. <laughs> uh, Up here, you never know. Right. So um, on that fun note, uh, it's been great to be back. Uh, we will be back. At least Thursday is a question mark. Right. With Ian, uh, Hurricane Ian. And as, well, one of the, one of the only, well, as a found, the founding member left, and I could probably speak for the other founding member who pops up from time to time. Um, and I could probably speak for John in this. Um, I wish the people of Florida safety. Um, I wish the Panthers safety as they have to travel back um, in this as well. Um, so I, I wish everyone safety and um, I, I hope everyone will be okay. I noticed this morning that Florida declared a state of emergency and I heard rumblings of the, the Tampa Bay game being postponed. I'm not 100% sure on that. I did see something that the Tampa Bay had released. Um, but the but that's like I said, I, I have to kinda 
Yes, po Lightning postponed two preseason games ahead of Hurricane Ian. Uh, the hur uh, Hurricanes Wednesday, Predators Thursday. So yes, uh, that that was the statement I talked because Ron DeSantis issued a state of emergency for Florida. Okay, so that that's kind of like the 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 thing I wanted to say is, you know, um, as I'm fully aware of the damage it could do, John's fully aware of the damage it could do. Wish you guys well, and yeah. um, we will definitely be keeping an eye on it. Um, so that's that's a very scary situation. Especially for, you know, um, me and John do care about our local sports. Uh, the Packers left uh, this morning. Um, the Packers actually had a commercial flight that they were supposed to take, um, but ended up chartering one because um, they wanted to give up the seats to people who were trying to get out of there. So believe it or not, really class act move by the Packers. Um, opening up an entire commercial jet just to get people out of Tampa. So, really, like I said, class act by the Packers, and, and I, I, I won't complain. Um, also, going forward, uh, looks like um, we have some stuff coming up as well with the Preds, uh, they play, like I said, they play, they're supposed to play Tampa Thursday and Friday. Um, and then, um, you guys might see us Sunday, might. It'll see how we feel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but we might give you a slight review on the, uh, uh, NHL home away from home experience that is happening here in Milwaukee. Um, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks are taking on the Minnesota Wild. Um, as I'm going to cheer on an Admirals alum in Freddie Goodrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, as I was, he was a very kind person to me, and it, it's more of a personal cheering than it is a team cheering. I, I wish the man well. He was a great hockey player, and without him in that cup, I don't think we got as far as we did. So kudos to him, and I wish him well. Sometimes you just have to look at it that way. Um, other times you could be spiteful and mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like um, Nick Cousins. <laughs> um, but all righty, uh, that should wrap it up for our show. Uh, we will see you guys either Thursday or Friday. We will um, keep you up to date on our page. Um, do note that uh, this week is the last week that we will be dropping uh, weekly Wednesday wallpapers um, as we will be back pumping out videos every well almost every day if it'll feel like <laughs> mm -hmm. for the first little while and then it'll just become a thing again and then I'll just be like <laughs> as I was at the end of the season it, it it's one of those things trust me you have to get in this to kind of get it but by the time hockey season's done I'm looking so forward to racing season because just to get away from like the sport because I'm so entrenched in it, it's nice to get away. It keeps my love alive. Yeah. And racing's done. I'm like, let's go to hockey. <laughs> so mm. it really works itself out. You know, John, John's heard me over the last week or so. Um, since my son's birthday, I'm like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Today comes up. I'm like, I'm not ready. <laughs> uh. So yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Uh, update for me. Uh, I'm out of the boot. I'm hoping to be able to make it to the game on Sunday without wearing the boot, but most likely I'm gonna have to wear it, just on the basis that I know that I walked a little bit today and it hurt. So, um, I may actually have to wear it Sunday, unfortunately. Um, but um, if if you are in our area and going to this game, um, and you see us. Please come say hi. 
ask us anything you want to know about our show or about these two organizations um if john doesn't know he'll direct you to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> because um i know a lot about um the history of the predators and the history of the admirals as i've been a fan since of the admiral since 1992 and the predators since their inception in 1999 um as they announced their affiliation with the milwaukee admirals as well in 1999 so um, you know, before that, I was a Buffalo Sabres fan. As far as the NHL was concerned, I still have love for that team. It's just not like it used to be. Um, I just, I'm not, it's not the 90s and early 2000s. It's just not, it's really hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we all go through those. Well, and we're going to go through it again eventually one day. We'll go through a slumper. But hopefully I'll be here to give you guys hope so i will chat with you guys later and thank you all for watching um we are very glad to be back for this season also big thank you to hockey blocker for this season um their support means a lot to us um just uh it's hockey community supporting the hockey community it's just what we do um so that's where we're at nowadays um i would like also to thank the admirals and preds for allowing us to cover them for yet another season um i'm I'm hopefully truly enjoy going to enjoy this and maybe we'll see a lifting of a cup of a kind i i that's the goal for every team it would be nice to see someone who hasn't won in a while win it um, so, I mean, that's the kind of mindset I have this year. Um, we've gotten close. I think this is probably the best roster we've put out in a couple years. Yeah. And I feel very confident in it. Um, but like I said, they look very good today, but that's today. It's tomorrow's another day with practice, um, with Thursday up in the air and them playing Friday. And as soon as Friday hits, they actually have to jump on a plane and leave. So it's not like you can really move this game. They got to go overseas. So unless you're going to make them play doubleheader at home that day, right. I really don't see it, you know. But we'll see what happens. Like I said, we'll keep you guys up to date. And uh, see you either Thursday or Friday.